And I'm the country sales and marketing manager for Serena Hotels Uganda. Let's humble ourselves in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you and glorify your name. We thank you for this moment that you've brought us together as the tourism fraternity. We thank you for UTB, for this Poete exhibition that has been a great success. And for this food that we are going to eat, Heavenly Father, may it nourish our bodies and souls. Amen. So, sir, my name is Brad Waluching, the Deputy CEO of Uganda Tourism Board. I want to say you are most welcome to this party 2021. This is an unprecedented party in the sense that it's coming at a time when we have COVID within our midst. We have had five editions of Poate that we held physically, locations, we put names to faces, shaking hands, but this party is very special in the way that uh, it has been hosted virtually. We are very grateful that despite all the challenges that uh, have been ushered in with COVID-19, Poate 2021 to the largest extent, has been very, very successful. My name is Ashley Sbiarhanga. I work with Nature Uganda as the executive director. We are here at Shelton Hotel um, at the Powate function, the closing ceremony. Uh, this has been very wonderful. We organized the first virtual event of this nature that has happened in Uganda and uh, were attended uh, by the numbers that were allowed and uh, quite good discussions, good presentations and good speeches. But I should also add that um, this is also a very good opportunity that we are seeing tourism starting to open, that we are seeing Uganda starting to open to the rest of the world. This is very, very nice, this is very, very interesting and we encourage Uganda Tourism Board and its partners and other organizations like Nature Uganda involved to continue opening Uganda for the, uh, for the world. I should say that uh, Uganda is a very interesting country. It's one of the best countries in the world. It's one of the best located country in the world. It has got the best, um, the best climate in the world. And for me, I'm a biologist and I'm a bada, and I think Uganda has got the best comparative advantage of any other country in Africa. We need to continue giving it the profile, we need to continue putting it into the market, we need to continue opening it to the world so that people can come to our country and see what for us we enjoy as the, uh, as the residents. We take it for granted, we think 
seeing nature, seeing greenery, seeing birds everywhere, seeing, seeing animals everywhere is a given. But this is something that you cannot find anywhere else in the world. So we want to open up the country to other people to come and enjoy what for us residents we have been lucky to enjoy for the rest of the world. So this has been very good. I encourage you to be continue doing this. I continue partners to continue participating and open the world for Uganda to continue doing our tourism. Let me quickly recap some of the key messages that we've had over the past three days. First, it is important that we don't forget the lessons of the past. There are no shortages of pandemics like COVID-19 on the horizon and there will always be challenges. Uganda on the global front has done very well in managing the spread and impact of COVID. But that is an isolated plus. We need a harmonized response to pandemics and safety as a region. We need a harmonized response to these pandemics. I'm talking Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, so that we can all enjoy regional visitors. For example, Uganda did well, but the neighbors, Kenya and Tanzania, are having a new wave, and therefore they are closed, or at least many parts of their countries. The effect has been that tourists who plan to visit the region in May and June as a circuit are canceling trips. They're canceling all their visits into Uganda because the Kenya and Tanzania sections of their trips cannot happen. Our businesses will continue to close because of unharmonized responses. What if the regional governments designed a response that is collective in collaboration? Those of you, my online audience, you must have seen this place. They had three people over here. Claire was in the middle in her capacity as marketing manager of Uganda Tourism Board. This morning she was wearing something similar to this, but a bit different. This is what we call a gomesi. You know, it's very lovely. <laughs> Notice the puff sleeves, the square neckline, and the two buttons. A typical gomesi is actually made of six meters of material. So Claire is wearing six meters of material and something else underneath which she has tied, which they call a kikoi. And most important, this, this sash over here, which is borrowed from the kimono, the Japanese kimono, which some of you may not know. This one is what dresses up the outfit and they call it chitambala. This one here is generally the national costume of the women of Uganda. My online audience, come and have a look for yourself and purchase a gomesi for yourself. This gomesi is a very old design. It was designed in 1905 by a Goan Asian by the name of Gomez and of course being good Ugandans we couldn't pronounce that name so it was bastardized to Gomesi Gomesi it was actually commissioned and first worn as a school uniform at Gayaza High School I know some of you went to Gayaza High School I'm Gabi, is my name, and I'm the marketing manager of the Uganda Tourism Board, which is um, the marketing agency under the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. We are here today holding a closing ceremony for the sixth edition of the Pearl of Africa Tourism Expo, which in short we call Powate. Powate is an annual exposition that we hold to bring together our sector players and link them with potential buyers 
of uh, our tourism products. This time round, Powate was very special and different because it was held as a virtual pla as a virtual event. The previous editions, the five editions, have been held as physical events in country. So we'd bring in people from outside of Uganda, expose them to our tourism products, so that we entice them into buying our product. This time, because of the challenges and interferences that we've had imposed upon our sector by the COVID, we took the decision to hold this expo uh, virtually which has really paid off because uh, unlike the physical expos where we've been having up to 700 attendants and participants, this time we had up to 2,500 participants. And out of those, about 1,500 were indigenous local uh, players in our sector. That includes hoteliers, it includes two operators, ticketing agents, and uh, these have had a chance to meet with people that sell travel to Africa from across the world. We had people coming in, we call them hosted buyers, because they're the people that come in to listen to what you have to offer as a destination so that they go back and try to book business for you. So we had a lot of people coming. We had over 150 buyers from the US, about 50 from Canada, so many from Germany. So what is giving us a platform to restart our sector, just like the theme for the event has been, the theme has been reconnect, restart, reboot the tourism of Uganda. And we, we really believe that this platform has given us a chance to revive our sector because it has helped us to revive the discussions around Uganda's tourism. It has given us a platform to reconnect with the people that we had lost touch with for over a year. It has given us a chance to showcase our tourism product. Most importantly, it has helped us to have conversations around the readiness of our country to receive people in Uganda. So um, it has come in at the right time when the COVID vaccine is being rolled out uh, world over. As we speak at the moment, key countries where we get most of our visitors from, like the US, are now at 60% in terms of rural out of uh, the COVID vaccine. So when we hold the event at this time, it gives us a lot of hope that uh, in a few months, those countries will have rolled out the COVID vaccine 100%, and that we are going to start seeing increased international arrivals for tourism into our country. So as the tourism board, that gives us a lot of hope because now we shall see um, arrivals from foreign countries which is going now to support already the existing domestic market which has really grown in the past few months because of the back 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 to back campaigns that we've run promoting domestic tourism the biggest that we've run recently which we had dubbed uh, take on the pal it has seen an increment in ugandans going around our different tourism attractions so now that we've uh, held for what it has given us a chance to enhance our visibility or for Destination Uganda, enhance awareness around the different products that we have for tourism and we are very positive that by close of this year we are going to see a lot of people coming in from other countries for the tourism.